Good day, everybody. And we are back again together looking at, uh, you know, the um, February, actually, no, the May, June paper from, you know, the DBE uh, NSC or the uh, uh, senior certificate exam. Right. So uh, we've started on question one and question two, and we are continuing on question three. Right. So that's on projectile motion. So if you haven't subscribed, please just be part of the family. And for those of you who might need assistance, please consider, uh, you know, sending us an email and our email address is info at mlungisinkosi.co.za. Right. Let's get into the question. So they give us a mess, a ball of mess, which is 0 0.06 kilograms, is thrown vertically upwards uh, from the balcony of a three meter building. OK, above the ground. Right. So there's a ball there which has been thrown up. OK, they say the ball reaches a maximum height H. So that's our maximum height. Please remember that when we consider maximum height, it would mean that the velocity or the speed uh, at that point is zero. Right. So uh, they say ignore the effects of air resistance. Of course, this tells us that this should be in free fall. OK, so in that case, it means gravity is the only force that acts on the ball. Right. Now they say name the force acting on the ball while it is in free fall. Well, I've just said it now. Of course, that should be the gravitational force. OK, right. Now they say the velocity time diagram or rather graph below represents uh, the motion of the ball from the instant it is thrown upwards until it hits the ground. Now, of course, uh, you know, for those of you who haven't seen this uh, before or, or to have not seen me uh, tackle graphs, please just go to our um, playlist on projectile motion and you'll see some of the questions that we've tackled there uh, on projectile motion, you know, where I tackle graphs in particular. Uh, and you'll note one of the things that we said is that in a velocity time graph, the gradient underneath that graph would give you the acceleration, but the area underneath that graph would actually give you the displacement. OK, right now they say to you, uh, write down the acceleration. Do you see they said write it down? OK, at, at t is equals to 1.90, uh, 1.02. Now, in this case, it must mean, OK, this is from the moment that we dropped it. I mean, we threw it up. So in that case, it started decreasing as it was going up. It was decreasing until it got to maximum height. That's maximum height there uh, because the velocity was zero. So it means maximum height must have occurred at 1.02 seconds. OK, and then obviously then the velocity starts changing direction and it goes down. Uh, so that clearly tells us that they must have taken upwards as positive. How do I know that? My graph starts on the positive section, okay, of the velocity, and it keeps decreasing, okay? And when it's going down, uh, I can see that this is when it's on the negative side of uh, the graph, okay? Right, okay, so we look at, um, they say now, uh, write down the acceleration. So we know uh, to answer our question for 3.2, our acceleration should be 9.8 meters per second squared downwards. OK, uh, or you can actually say um, it should be negative 9.8 meters per second squared if you want to just show that direction. And of course, uh, you can uh, say that is downwards. OK, right. Uh, keep in mind that if the um, if we take up as positive, then it means that down is negative, and so acceleration always moves vertically downwards. Okay. Right. So um, the next question they say uh, consider the areas A1 and A2 shown in the graph above. Write down the numerical values represented by the difference in these areas a1 and a2 of course uh, this area a1 would be the displacement up until maximum height and the area a2 would be the displacement from maximum height uh, till it gets to the ground 
So I want you to please note the total area here would be the total displacement that is traveled by this ball. Now, if you think about it, from the moment it was thrown upwards, right up until it comes back to the same point, the total displacement is zero. But in this case, from the moment we threw it up, came back to zero displacement and then was displaced three meters down. So it means the total displacement from the point of projection, okay, right up until the ground would be three meters. So the total area there should actually be three meters. That's the uh, numerical value of the area. So in that case, it means, uh, um, in that case, uh, we know that this would be three meters. Okay, right. And then 3.4. Uh, quickly, they say uh, calculate the speed at which the ball is thrown upwards. Okay, so in that case, let me just take from the moment that it was thrown up until it gets to maximum height. And the reason for that, we're given the time there. So I would say, well, um, let's use the first equation, right? So VF is equal to VI plus A delta T. Okay, what would be our final velocity? Remember, I'm taking from that moment until maximum height. So at maximum height, the speed is zero or the velocity is zero. And in that case, our initial velocity, that's what we want. Our acceleration, please remember that's negative 9.8. And the time there was 1.02. That's the time it takes to maximum height. And to find that initial velocity, all I'll simply say is 9.8, okay, multiplied by 1.02, um, and I get a value of 9.9, .9, okay, I'll just take that as 10. So in that case, it means we projected it upwards at a speed of 10 meters per second. Now, please, I want you to note, in that case, when I took this to the other side, it became positive. That's why my answer there is positive. So it's telling me that the speed is 10 meters per second. And remember, I don't need to state direction in this case because they asked for the speed. Right, 3.5, uh, oh, sorry, 3.4.1. And this was 3.4.2. And the next question, they say calculate the height, okay? Um, so they want the height h. Now, remember, we already had the three meters there. So all I need to do is just find the height until maximum height. Um, so let's see which equation of motion would we take. Okay, um, yeah, we can take actually the third equation. That's vi delta t plus 1 over 2 times a delta t squared. Or you can even use the one uh, delta y is equals to 1 over 2 vf plus vi. Or you can say vf plus vi over 2 times the change in time. In fact, let me use this one. I think it would be much easier. Um, so my final velocity when uh, I get to maximum height there, that would be 0. Uh, my initial velocity, we just calculated it there. It's a positive 10, okay, uh, multiplied by the time, which is 1.02. Okay, so uh, let's do that quickly. So that's uh, 1.02, and I get a value of 5.1 meters, uh, 5.1 meters. So in that case, it means it went 5.1 meters upwards. But remember, uh, in that case, what we did was we were looking for the height h and we just found now the height until maximum height from the point of throw until maximum height but the total height h in that case would be 5.1 plus that three meters and it should be eight meters in total all right i hope that makes sense okay so the next question uh, as we move swiftly along, they say after hitting the ground, uh, the ball bounces vertically upwards and reaches um, a new maximum height of 1.1. Okay, 
so now it hits the ground gets to the ground okay and reaches another maximum height um, of one uh, rather um, in 1.1 seconds right now they say calculate the work done by the ground on the ball whilst uh, uh, sorry while the ball is in contact with the ground okay let's do that quickly right uh, if you don't mind I'm just going to uh, just move to the other side okay so that I can get space there right now if you think about it uh, let's let's talk about the work done now I know that okay so let's consider first of all I know this ball would arrive on the ground with a certain speed and obviously collide with the ground so let's call that speed um, yeah le let's call it the speed before right that's the initial and then it bounces back up uh, let's call that the final speed or the speed after collision in that case right so we want to know how much energy would it lose or in that case the work done by the ground on the ball while it is in contact with it okay so let me first calculate the velocity with which it left the ground remember they said it reached another maximum height after 1.1 seconds right so i'm going to say look uh, let's find out what that um yeah let, let's find out what that uh, uh velocity is there so um let's see i've got final velocity there being zero I want the initial velocity that means when it left the ground there okay and I know the time so once again I'm going to use the same equation VF that's VI plus uh, A delta T so my final velocity would be zero when it got to that uh, height there my initial velocity that's what I'm looking for um, but I know that the acceleration is minus 9.8 and the time there should be 1.1 seconds right so going to say look uh, if I'm looking for that initial velocity that would be 9.8 times 1.1 and I get 10.78 right but remember it was going upwards so uh, it should be a positive 10.78 because we took upwards as positive okay right but we also didn't have the speed with which it landed on the ground now remember the 10 meters per second that we calculated was the speed with which it it, it um, you know it was thrown okay uh, but we didn't we, we don't know uh, at what speed it landed on the ground okay so we can find that speed as well and i'll tell you where i'm going with this because if i can find out the change in kinetic energy there uh, that would obviously be what would change the kinetic energy to us it, it would be the amount of work that will be done by the earth it, it means it has lost the energy due to you know uh, the uh, the collision with the ground there so what i'm going to do is going to say look let's find out what is the final velocity there okay i don't know where you want to start i'm just going to start where it was uh, thrown okay i know the initial velocity i want the final velocity okay uh, didn't have the time but i've got the total displacement or if you want to you can take from maximum height right up until it hits the ground okay we already know that uh, that um yeah that height there was uh, 8.1 we calculated it right uh, so we can use it so initial velocity zero final velocity would be what you're looking for and our height would be um, uh, 8.1 but i'm going to take from the uh, from the moment from the point of throw and say look i know what my uh, uh, in fact let's use vf squared is equals to vi squared plus two times a delta y right and i'm looking for my final velocity okay my initial velocity uh, we said it was 10 
uh, squared plus 2 times a negative 9.8 and we said that displacement was 3 meters but it was 3 meters downwards please we should be careful about that okay so it means that uh, we'd have to add that so I'm going to just put that in the calculator the square root of I might as well just take the uh, square root of that to get my VF my V final so I'd say well 10 squared remember that 10 was already positive so this is when it was thrown upwards okay and that's negative acceleration but the displacement remember because we're taking up as positive remember between the point of throw and uh, the ground it's actually displaced downwards okay so i'd say uh, plus so negative times a negative is a positive um, so that gives me a speed of 12.6 so this would be the speed with which it lands on the ground okay now uh, let's do this so in this case I can simply calculate and say well I know what happened here I know that uh, the network done would change the kinetic energy so if I can find out the change in kinetic energy I would find out how much uh, work did the earth actually do on the on the ball you know in changing its velocity okay um, so I would say well uh, I was given the mass of the ball so that would be half times the mass um, vf squared minus vi squared okay or you can say half mv squared minus half mvi squared so half of the mass we're given a 0 0.06 okay uh, but we know that our final velocity now I want you to please be careful here because remember we are talking about the change there the final velocity is the velocity when it left the ground okay so this final here remember we are talking about the collision okay so the final is when it left the ground and the speed with which it left the ground we found that to be 10.96 okay so this would be 10 point sorry 10.78 i'm not sure where i got that 96 uh, 10.78 squared minus in this case the speed with which it landed on the ground uh, and by the way that speed should actually be you know you remember when you take the square root should you should have plus or minus but in this case it should be minus 12.6 however remember when i uh, substitute it there I say minus 12.6 um, and I square that as well okay I'm just going to move that okay let's rather make a square bracket there okay so that's minus 12.6 but remember when I square negative it becomes positive so this is where we would now get the you know our change in kinetic energy and um, let's see what we get there so that's a half of 0 0.06 okay so we get 0 0.03 uh, we open bracket there 10.78 uh, uh, squared and we say minus now remember this guy now we square the negative as well okay uh, 12.6 so that's 12.6 squared all right and I get an answer of uh okay let's see quickly i get an answer of uh negative 1.27 joules so that's the amount of energy that was lost okay when it collided with the ground and please remember when you get negative energy what it's uh, what it simply implies is that this is energy that was lost okay so it means when it collided with the ground it lost an amount of 1.27 joules all right and that is how this cookie crumbles right uh, i hope that made sense um yeah if if you do uh, you know uh, maybe have an alternative method in which you could uh, have solved this 
please just throw it on the comments you know for the benefit of all all right uh, but otherwise i'll leave it here uh, i'll see you guys next time please don't forget to subscribe and yo please just continue inviting others and tell them how much we're learning on this channel okay right otherwise i'll see you guys next time shop shop